Hello, and thanks for joining us today. I'm Karen Zadravec with the National Partnership for Women and Families. August is Black Philanthropy Month, and I'm excited to kick off this conversation, this celebration of Give 828 Day, a day of giving to Black-led, Black-benefiting organizations powered by the Young Black and Giving Back Institute. Representative Val Demings of Florida recently said, systemic racism is always the ghost in the room. The nonprofit sector and progressive community are not immune. We know for a fact that organizations led by Black leaders, particularly Black women, receive significantly less funding than white-led organizations. The way to disrupt the status quo and fight this racial inequity is for funders, donors, and white nonprofit leaders to lift up and support leaders of color. On that note, I'm so excited for you to meet Ebony Johnson Cooper in just a few minutes. She's the executive director and founder of the Young Black and Giving Back Institute, and she's an inspiration. To get started, we'd like to share with you two short videos about the National Partnership and Young Black and Giving Back. Then National Partnership President Deb Deborah Ness and Ebony Johnson Cooper will discuss Give 828 Day and the incredible Black-led nonprofits that Ebony helps support. But first, just a quick note about the donate button you see below. You can click on that anytime or go to give828.org to make a tax-deductible donation to the Young Black and Giving Back Institute. Thanks again for tuning in. This is what my morning looks like every day. It's not easy being a mom of two. For too long, the struggles of women and families have not been heard. One organization brings together people willing to fight for the rights of women and families, ready to make change that is long overdue ready to guarantee that working people are able to take paid time away from their jobs to care for themselves and their families. Oh, mom, no, 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 you're not supposed to be carrying anything. Let me take that. <laughs> I'm proud of you, okay? Every day I worry about my son's future. I don't want him to be a victim just because of the color of his skin. The world is scary for our young people today. Ready to take on hate, discrimination, and threats to health and safety that affect women and families every day. Ready to eliminate the barriers that women face. I can't believe he cornered me like that. I want to say something, but I cannot afford to lose this job. Ready to abolish unfair workplace policies like sex discrimination, unequal pay, pregnancy discrimination, and harassment. See you tomorrow. I'm so tired taking care of someone, myself, and my family. It's hard. Ready to support family caregivers and care workers so they don't face discrimination or financial hardship. I don't think they heard me. I know my body and I know something is wrong. Ready to end systemic racism, sexism, and discrimination that causes health disparities. Ready to fight back so everyone has access to affordable, quality health care. I can't afford another child. And even if I could afford an abortion, my state just closed the last clinic. Ready to give women the freedom to decide if, when, and how to start or grow a family free of shame or stigma. It is time to eliminate the barriers that women continue to face. Because when women and families are strong, we are all strong. Because... Equality. There are thousands of black led, black benefiting nonprofits that, if given the opportunity, could raise funds to support their mission. nonprofits will have the chance to shine a light on their work and fundraise to support their missions. August 28th is a special day in the Black community. In 1955, Emmett Till was murdered. In 1963, Dr. King gave his I Have a Dream speech. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans. 
In 2008, Barack Obama announced his candidacy for president. You know how often we're forgotten. Small black organizations who are doing the work in our community who don't make enough to apply for large grants, who often don't have the capacity to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars. This day is for them. If you're one of those organizations, this day is for you. Hi, everybody. I'm Deborah Ness, president of the National Partnership for Women and Families. And I'm so excited to have Ebony Johnson Cooper here with me. She is the executive director of Young, Black, and Giving Back. And Ebony, I want to start off by saying that the National Partnership is really proud to be an official sponsor of Give 828 Day. We want to encourage everybody who's watching right now to join with us. And I'll explain a little bit more about us and our mission and why this is so important to us in a few minutes. Um, but uh, I just want to say I'm really grateful for the work that you're doing. And I'd love to start off by asking you if you'd share a little bit about your own story with our viewers. Like, how did you get started? Um, and what made you come up with the idea behind Young, Black, and Giving Back? Well, first, um, to you, Deborah, and your team, thank you for, for thinking enough of us. Um, I know that in this um, political and, and highly racial uh, contentious moment that having allies to support um, intentional black organizations is really important and so um, when I got your email um, I wasn't quite familiar um, but once I read your mission I was really excited uh, because I know that maternal health and reproductive health for black women is so important in this time and so uh, we are excited um, to start the partnership with you all um, and have the organizations that are registered um, to introduce or continue to do um, some amazing work. So um, let's see, where do I start? Uh, wow. So the Institute, the Young Black and Giving Back Institute, officially started in 2014. Um, after about five years of work that I was doing on my own, uh, working with my peers, I wanted to uh, bring attention to the young black millennials. That was the trendy word, still is, but um, at the time around giving and black philanthropy. And I wanted folks to know that just because at the time we were in our 20s, that we were still giving and serving on boards and volunteering and doing all this great work, but no one really knew about it. So the organization, which started off as Friends of Ebony, since the name, uh, was really about sharing the news of what we were doing, the good news of what we were doing. Um, and so fast forward to 2014, I wanted to really formalize that work. Um, and so we began through the Young Black and Giving Back Institute as a nonprofit doing trainings and workshops and intentional convenings with other young Black folks around the country um, who would describe themselves as professionals, advocates, um, change makers, community um, leaders who are doing the work and we provided spaces, safe spaces for us to be able to have conversations that weren't happening in other places. And so that's what we've been doing for the past um, six years. Uh, and so here we are now um, at this really pivotal moment. Um, and the day itself started uh, really in 2017. We wanted to fundraise um, every August um, in uh, parallel to Black Philanthropy Month. Uh, we always do, that's sort of our, our annual fundraising month. And so 2017 was such a great year for us. Um, we were able to raise $4,000 with individual donors as most of our support has come from individuals. We said, you know, why keep this to ourselves? Why don't we open the door? Um, our fundraising team had this really great idea to do one day of giving. And so in 2018, we decided to give it a shot. You know, it really started, you know, we, we kind of just, just sort of, you know, threw our nets out, see what we would get back in a really guerrilla kind of way. And it worked. It worked really well the first year. We had 112 organizations. You know, they raised not, not a whole bunch, you know, but they raised enough for us to, to really 
think that, wait, this can actually work. So fast forward to 2019, uh, we were able to get a partner in Mighty Cause, who is the platform for Give 828 Day. Um, and so they host the day for us on the platform for free, um, minus the fees that donors provide. But for us as an organization, we don't have to pay for it. Um, and last year, organizations were able to raise almost $40,000. Um, we had a little over, um, well, almost 200 organizations. And so we really started to feel the steam picking up uh, with the help of um, partners. We have Community Foundation, um, who's still on board with us. Uh, we have a small uh, Black business who is still supporting. Um, and so this year, given everything has happened from the pandemic to, as I mentioned earlier, sort of the racial tension, uh, folks are looking for organizations to really give to. And so I'm really, really excited to share that we have officially uh, 452 Black-led, Black-benefiting organizations, just shy of our 500 organization goal. But I can say that in addition to those 452, there are a little over 200 organizations um, and individuals that are doing supporting fundraising campaigns. So all together, when donors go on, they can search organizations and individual campaigns that net net to about 650 or so. So there's a lot of giving that's gonna go on on Friday and a lot of options that people have. Um, so the day itself is really a day to celebrate the organizations that are on the ground doing work um, that are often overlooked by large um, foundations and institutional philanthropy. And it's a way for them to be able to get their friends and their donors. And then for those who are just looking to support black organizations to be able to find them. I feel like I've said a lot, but hopefully I answered your question. Wow, that is fabulous. Um, and it's just such a, an inspiring story. And I, I have to say you yourself are, are so inspiring and a real example of what a difference that one person can make. Um, so I, I just love it. And um, I can't believe how fast you've grown. So fingers crossed, this is going to be a blockbuster for you guys. Um, and I, I wonder if you could um, give folks um, a sense of how do you decide um, what organizations to uh, choose to be part? I mean, you've got over 400 organizations participating now. So, um, and, and there are ones that sometimes people don't know about and funders don't know about. So how do you make those kinds of decisions? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and we actually had over 600 organizations to apply. So we have a formal registration process um, and we have a trusty little um, engine that could um, team and someone who is dedicated to actually look into the organizations, every single organization that registers. For us, it's really important that the representation and the leadership and the power dynamic of the organization looks like the community they're serving. And so what that means for us is at least 50% of staff and 50% of the board must be Black. And so Black is inclusive of the diaspora, so that can be Afro-Latino, that can be um, Black Caribbean, it can be African, um, but as long as they are, Afri um, excuse me, Black or African um, of the diaspora, um, they can be part of the day. And the reason why that is so important is because oftentimes we will see organizations doing great work that may have sort of front staff that's of color or black, and then behind the scenes, the executive leadership or the boards are majority white. And so that means that the decisions that are being made about those communities are not held in within the communities, right? And so that doesn't mean that everyone within the black community thinks alike or does things alike, but what that does mean is that there's a certain understanding, there's a certain sort of institutional knowledge that a black person or black community can bring to the table about issues that impact us, right? And so we want to be very careful and intentional about that. And so we've had to tell some organizations no, um, and some that are really, really not happy about it because their founder is Black. But then I come back and I tell them unapologetically, well, I'm really proud that you've taken the step, but look at the folks who are now making the decisions for your organization and the community that you're looking to impact. Like, are we being different than the systems that have been set up for us from the beginning? And so... That being said, um, those are the parameters for us. And of course, doing great work, which is you know kind of a, a given, um, but we wanna make sure that the power dynamics and the decision-making of that organization rests within the majority population that's being served. 
Wow, that makes a lot of sense. And um, I really respect the, the integrity of that focus. And um, I can only imagine what a difference that it makes in the way the communities uh, are served by those organizations. Um, you know, I um, am really excited about the fact that you gave us the opportunity to look at that huge list and, and pick a few organizations that are doing the kind of work that's really relevant to the National Partnerships mission right now. Um, and there are three groups in particular um, that are really focused on maternal health and reproductive justice. Um, they are Black Mamas Matter Alliance, um, they're based down in Georgia, um, uh, Mama Toto Village here in DC, and Dr. Shalon's Maternal Action Plan. And these groups are doing work that's really important to the national partnership, and, and I'll, I'll tell you tell you why. Because our our mission is to achieve equity for all women, and we know that we can only do that if we center the lived experiences of women of color and if we really do our part to combat to combat white supremacy so that that's really important to us and right now we know that black women are oppressed by systemic racism in pretty much every aspect of their lives um, and one of the ones that um, we have expertise in and where we work hard to, to make change is in the area of maternal health and reproductive justice. Um, and uh, these three organizations are doing really hard work in that area. And it's, it's overwhelming to think about the fact that right now in the United States of America, um, black moms are three to four times more likely to die due to pregnancy complications than white moms. And that, that's just something in our minds, that's a crisis mm -hmm. and something we're dedicated to changing. So you've given us um, an opportunity to support three groups doing that important work on the ground on this giving 828 day. Uh, and I, I wonder if there's anything you'd like to add about those organizations. Yeah, um, so I don't know those organizations um, personally. Um, it's our first time being able to work with them as well. Um, but overall, when we went through the missions of the organizations that were um, that are participating, overall there are 20 organizations um, and possibly even more. Um, but we know for sure that there are at least 20 that are dedicated and focused to uh, black women's health um, and maternal health. Uh, one organization um, that stands out that we, again, I don't know the organization, um, but it's it's special. I, um, I'm getting ready to be married and my, my husband, my um, soon to be husband is Haitian. And there is an organization that is called uh, the Foundation for the Advancement of Haitian Midwives. And so I always said that when my time comes, God willing, that I would be able to have a midwife. And I know how important midwifery is to Black women's reproductive health. Um, there's another organization um, that's based out of Columbia in the Midlands that also focuses uh, on midwifery as a way to help um, Black women and help them through that, that pivotal and you know, life-changing time time. Um, and so what I found um, in my reading and actually uh, experience with friends that have recently um, had children is that the, the closeness, A, of having a health practitioner who is a, a Black woman is really, really important. And then for those who have been fortunate enough to either have doulas or midwives, it has changed their experience tremendously. And so the 20 organizations that will be featured on your leaderboard um, have taken the taken that that's that large piece of a black woman's life and said that hey we want to make sure that we can make sure that she has um, the tools and the resources that she needs during this time um, and then particularly when you're looking at countries like Haiti um, where there are already so many disparities but have said hey we're going to go a more holistic route with um, with midwifery I, I think that that is amazing 
and the fact that um, midwives and doulas are beginning to become so much more um, prevalent within the Black communities, particularly for, for women of color, oftentimes we just, you know, we go where we feel like we can afford. Um, but these are centers that are providing uh, almost services, almost free of charge, as close as they can get. And so um, I'm really excited um, about, about those organizations and all of the ones um, that, uh, that are featured on, that will be featured on your, on your leaderboard this year. Boy, that is really great to hear. Um, I have to say it's so affirming. I think the work that these organizations are doing is so critically important. And a lot of times people don't know. Um, and, and you were absolutely right about the fact that when uh, people and women receive care from folks in the community who understand their lives, um, uh, when they have access to midwives and doulas um, and community health workers, there are outcomes, um, both the outcomes for, for the mom and the outcome for the baby are better. And, um, and in fact, it, it just helps to make for healthier families all around. So um, thank you so much for, for um, elevating the work of, of the, these groups and for giving us this chance to be part of um, uh, making people more aware and asking for them to contribute their support. So, Ebony, I can't thank you enough. Um, your energy and your creativity and your passion are, like I said, so inspiring. Um, and we are really proud to be able to support this day of Black philanthropy. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody who's watching. Thank you, Deborah. We really appreciate it. So glad to have you guys on. And I look forward to reporting great numbers uh, for you guys this time next week. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Deborah. And thank you, Ebony, for being such an inspiration to me and for all of us here at the National Partnership. And thanks all of you for joining us today. Now, as you get out your wallets and get ready to click that donate button, we'd like to send you off with a poignant and powerful song generously shared with us by the Good Shepherd Music Collaborative, because every Black life matters.
down. Hey, happy Juneteenth. Go on, give us us free. Sit down. Ain't that the reason we in these streets? Matter. Everyone 